Several posters pointed out an error in my last video. I corrected it in the video description, but it really needs to be highlighted. In that video, I showed Ivor Cummins saying this. We now have many, many publications, including Lancet, that show clearly, based on the data, that lockdown barely or does not affect deaths per million outcomes. I looked at the Lancet paper he cited, which actually wasn't published in the Lancet, but in eClinical Medicine, which is an open access journal published by the Lancet Group. And I said this, nevertheless, it concluded that lockdowns don't affect mortality rates, which is supportive of Cummins's claims. But here's the problem. When I look for other studies in Lancet-owned journals and in the Lancet itself, they all reach the opposite conclusion. They all concluded that lockdowns reduced rates of infection. And as people pointed out, that's not the opposite conclusion. The opposite conclusion would be a paper concluding that lockdowns reduce mortality rates. What they show is a reduction in infection rates. Isn't that the same thing, you might think? Well, the argument is that a slower rate of infection might cut down the number of infections in the short term, but they will get infected at some point during the pandemic. So all this does is buy time. But the reason epidemiologists say lockdown is effective is that slowing the rate of infection will ensure that there's enough space in hospitals to treat everyone who contracts COVID, thus ensuring a higher survival rate. It's known as flattening the curve. There are other benefits to delaying infections. For one thing, treatment continually improves the longer the pandemic goes on. So people who get infected now have a much better chance of survival than those who got infected earlier on in the pandemic. And of course, since there's a race to get everyone vaccinated, buying time is crucial. The better chance they have of getting a vaccine, the greater the reduction in deaths per million outcomes. So all other things being equal, there's a link between a reduction in the infection rate and a reduction in the number of deaths per million. But if that isn't explicitly stated in the papers I cited, then I shouldn't infer it. Does that mean Cummins was right when he said that there are many, many publications, as he calls them, showing that lockdown barely or does not affect deaths per million outcomes? No, because on that score, nothing has changed. The first paper on the list certainly does, as I pointed out, but the other ones I looked at in my video, where a proper citation was given, certainly don't. And since I made that video, I've checked a few others on the list, and they don't conclude that lockdown has an effect on death per million outcomes either. In addition, most of the publications on his list aren't peer-reviewed papers. Some are preprints with a specific warning that they shouldn't be reported in news media or relied upon without expert consultation. Others are opinion pieces or news articles. While I was checking this, I got an email from Ken Rice, who basically said exactly the same thing as I said earlier. So he disagrees with Cummins' conclusion that there's little or no effect of deaths per million outcomes. Oh, sorry, who's Ken Rice, you're wondering? Well, he's lead author of this study, which Cummins put 10th, apparently joint 10th, on his list of publications that supposedly support the conclusion that lockdown has little or no effect on death per million outcomes. Dr Rice's model only looked at the effect of mortality on the closure of schools, where there is little or no effect, but in the paper he didn't look at other forms of lockdown, like restricted mobility, the closure of businesses, or bans on mass gatherings. When I asked about these more general forms of lockdown, Dr Rice said... The model also indicates that if we had done nothing, we would have had over 200,000 deaths in a matter of months. He's talking about the UK, by the way, and would almost certainly have completely overwhelmed the health services, which would have had other knock-on effects. Also, we do now seem to have a vaccine, so can protect people who might otherwise have died. So Cummins does need to recheck the sources on his list. He needs to get rid of the blogs, the preprints and the news articles and get rid of the scientific studies that don't say what he claims they say. Now, Cummins can argue that in his opinion, such a conclusion about deaths per million can be inferred, but then he would be making the same mistake that I did, inferring a conclusion that the paper or article doesn't actually give based on his own amateur and unchecked opinion. 
Other errors I corrected from my video were wrong images or pronunciation errors that don't affect the substance. But this one does, so I've been happy to put the record straight. I hope Ivor Cummins will do likewise. We'll see.